Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome to part four in the video series for the 1983 300D. Today, I'm starting on the hood pad replacement. So anyway, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, there's not much left of this original hood pad and look, it just will, it'll just flake right off here. Just use old paint scraper to get it off. So anyway, we'll scrape all this off. And, um, and I've said this in other videos, it, guys, it's not necessary to remove all the glue residue. You just have to scrape the old foam off because the, uh, the, the new glue will go right over the old glue residue and it will hold absolutely fine. So don't get all OCD and go crazy with it trying to scrape off that old original glue because it's not necessary. There we have all that nasty stuff there. So let's go ahead and just fold the blanket over and then we can take it outside and dispose of it. Stuff's nasty. Okay, now we want to put our blanket right back on there because we want to protect the car from any glue that's going to drip down when installing the hood pad. Now we want to get our adhesive. So the stuff you use, you've seen this in tons of videos, guys. I know uh, this is for people that haven't seen the videos before. Super trim adhesive made by 3M, part number 08090. And you want to spray half of this can on the hood and the other half the can on the hood pad. And then you wanna let it sit for, I don't know, four or five minutes, let it get real tacky. And then you lift up the pad and it will immediately stick. And we wanna do a test fit. I'll pull it up here and I wanna mark the center line with a little marker. So then when we go, when we put the glue on and go to stick it up, I can just line up that center line and I know I'm in the right spot. And now I'm gonna go ahead and apply the glue. half the can on the hood half the can on the pad now let's let that sit for a few minutes okay Jim and I are gonna go ahead and lift this up let's see, let me get my center line here all right that's where we set it right there all right all right I'm good over here how you doing I'm good Guys, you press down in the center, and then you work your way out to the edges. You got your edge tucked over there. I do. There we go, guys. That's how you put on a hood pad. Okay, now that we got the hood pad on, there's no risk of any of the old deteriorated dust and foam or the, the dusty foam falling down on the engine when we do the valve uh, adjustment. So now we're gonna go ahead and pop off this cover. We'll clean everything up and we're gonna do a valve adjustment on this engine. 
All right, let's go ahead and get some of this uh, linkage up here removed and get this valve cover off of here. And these are reusable zip ties, so let me go ahead and get that guy off of here. Like to try to preserve those zip ties. There we go. We'll just move that guy out of the way. And we want to pop our Bowden cable loose and push it through there. This is like a, a body trim tool that I have. I wonder if this would be good for popping these guys off of here. I'll be damned. Look at that. So this is a <laughs> This is a tool for removing like body trim pieces. So you can like slide it around and, and it turns out it works perfect for popping those off. A screwdriver does also. Yeah, and this Bowden cable still has the original clips back here that hold it in place. So that's pretty cool. It's never been tampered with. All right, we'll just let that rest there like that. Okay, I'm gonna pull all of this off as one assembly because I want to clean that up. I do have to pop these loose over here. Pop our throttle linkage apart here. There we go. And I want to lubricate all this too, guys. Okay. I can basically, now I'll remove this cover here because there's also two levers under here that actuate a 3-2 vacuum valve and those levers can wear out. Um, and then you'll have, uh, if it's not working right under there, you can get a vacuum leak and you'll have, I think it's related to the EGR system, but if you have a vacuum leak and it can affect your transmission shifting, let's go ahead and remove this cover and then pop these vacuum lines off. And we don't want to drop this screw, but this holds on this plastic cover. There we go. This just slides off of here like that and we'll get in here and clean them up but see there's a little lever right there and then one right below it and it's also there's some lubrication still on there so when you turn your throttle linkage see how it presses the first lever and then under full throttle presses the second lever and this is your uh three two uh vacuum valve system that does goes over to the EGR and then it comes around here. Um, that has to do with transmission shifting right here. So anyway, you don't want leaks up here, so we'll check that out. But I can just pop that off. And now we can remove uh, this entire assembly up here because we want to clean the valve cover and clean all that up and lubricate it. Bolts. this upper throttle linkage base plate assembly. Here we go. And we're gonna clean this up. But here's your, uh, the Bowden cable. We can see that it was actually on the wrong side of the tab. That is supposed to be over there on that side, like that. So that that's why the transmission was shifting a little quick on me. Um, and there we go, there's our, just our throttle linkage right there. Here's our cruise control linkage, which mounts there. And this is our 3-2 valve. So let's set this aside. We'll get this all cleaned up in the parts washer. Let's go ahead and get this valve cover off here and See what type of adjustment, see how far it is out of adjustment. I have no idea when the last time this was adjusted. <laughs> there we go. All right, what else we got? There's our gasket. There we go, that gasket was just stuck on there. All right, guys, there we go. We got this valve cover off and that gasket has been on here a long time. Let's throw that away. And I'm going to set this over on the parts washer 
And then let's go ahead and take a look at this engine and let's do a valve adjustment. First thing I always like to do is inspect all the cam lobes for any scoring. And these are in beautiful condition. That means the oil was always changed regularly in it. And they didn't let dirty oil run through the engine all the time. See how shiny and clean these cam lobes are? See, there's no scratches or scoring on them. That means it was well-maintained, regular oil changes. And you can see our timing chain. This car only has 73,000 miles on it. These timing chains last hundreds of thousands of miles. Um, so you can see there's, there's no slop or no play at all in the timing chain. And right there is our timing chain tensioner. And that has oil pressure. I can't really push it back because it's filled with oil pressure. See it right there. This is our timing chain guide. It just looks great in here. This is our, that's an oil rail that runs all the way across. And underneath it, there's actually little holes right underneath it. Let's see if I can find one. Well, anyway, there's a little, little bitty holes right here, here, here. And when it pressurizes, it squirts oil right onto the cam lobes. So what we're going to be doing, you see, here's like the number one cylinder. Uh, let's see, this I think is a, uh exhaust. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I didn't look at my, yeah, let's go ahead and get my cheat sheet over here. Okay, there we go. Front of the engine, number one is exhaust. So we want that, that low pointing straight up. Let's see if I can find one that's straight up. There we go. That one's pretty much straight up. You can see it's kind of over towards the one o'clock position. And that means the base of the cam lobe is on the rocker arm. And that's where we want to take our valve adjustment measurements. And as far as the measurements go, now keep in mind, this hasn't been detailed, guys, so it's dirty under here. But what this says, there you go. Valve lash at water temp below 30 degrees Celsius. The intake is 0.10 millimeters. The exhaust is 0.35 millimeters. That means on a cold engine, below 30. Um, valve lash at water temp above 45 degrees Celsius. Your intake is 0.15 millimeters. Your exhaust is 0 0.40. So we're going to do 0 0.10, 0 0.35 because we have a cold engine. All right, guys, I'm under the car on my back, laying on the ground. You can see right there on the front of the crankshaft, I have a one and one sixteenth inch socket. And that allows me to rotate the crankshaft. You only want to go clockwise, but you can pull that and that lets you rotate uh, the crank or rotate the engine. And you only do it clockwise so you don't mess up your uh, your timing chain and the tension on the timing chain. But let me go back up here and I'll show you what we just accomplished. I rotated it a few times. And okay, here we go. The exhaust or the first valve, see how it's pointed over here now? So I'm going to rotate it around a few times and get it up to top, uh, up to the very top so we have the base on our rocker. So let me go ahead and do that. There you go. You guys can see it right there. I'm gonna go under the car and rotate it. And I'm just gonna guess when I think it's up, up at the top. But you guys are gonna see it in real time. All right. Couple more turns and we're exactly where we want it to be. Okay guys, we got this cam low pointed about the one o'clock position. That means the base of the cam is right there on the rocker. Now, since this is an exhaust, we read earlier that the exhaust should have a 0.35 millimeter clearance. There we go. 0 0.014 14 thousandths or 0.35 millimeters. So let's see if this fits in there. 
Okay, see, that does not go through there. That means it's too tight, and I need to loosen up the valve lash. And um, guys, that's what we're going to find all the way down here, because it's been a while since the valve adjustment has been done. So we're probably going to have to loosen up all the valves and get a little more clearance back. But see, that will not slip in there. So I'm going to set that aside, and we'll get our valve adjustment wrenches. Okay, guys, I've got the valve adjustment wrenches. Let me see if I can set this light where you guys can somewhat see. Let's see here. Okay, I'm only going to do this for like two, two valves, guys, because it's a lot of work to record doing a valve adjustment. So what you see in the dead center of this shot, that's your... Uh, this is your lock nut on top of the uh, valve stem and below it is your adjustment nut and so we want to undo the lock nut <clears throat> there we go now the lock nut is loose so now we can move the adjustment nut now it was a little tight so we want to move the adjustment nut down to gain clearance and to do that I'm going to turn it. We're going to go with like, that's probably a half turn. And then that allows us to bring down the lock nut or adjustment nut. You can look at it either way. We can bring that down uh, away and open up the gap. Here we go. We brought that down. Now, before I tighten anything down, I just want to see kind of where we're at. And to do that, we're going to come right over here. Okay, perfect. See how that smoothly slips right in there? Now, I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up, and it's going to, bear, it's going to close that gap a little bit, and then we're going to try our feeler gauge again. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Got that one there. I'm gonna hold the one on top. And I'm gonna spin the bottom one counterclockwise. There we go. So we just, we pushed up on that nut. So even though we didn't move that top nut, it pushed up on a little bit. And a little bit is all we're talking about here. You know, thousandths of an inch. All right, that's a little more clearance than I want. Little too loose. So, I'm going to make it a little tighter. So what I want to do, put my wrench on there. We'll loosen the top a little bit. All right, there we go. Now, and then I want to tighten, tighten my bottom one. All right, let's see what that did. I just barely raised up the top just a little bit. Ah, there we go. That's it. That's perfect lash. We're gonna, there's a little resistance. See, I got to push. I got to push just a little to go through there. See? See, it's kind of wanting to hold my wrench in there. Just a little snug. That's dead on the money. You don't want it too loose. You don't want it too tight. That's perfect, 0.35 millimeters. So what we have to do now, I can see the next valve. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, number six is almost in the position we want. It needs to rotate a little more that way. And number six is a one, two, three, four, five, six is an intake. So for the intake, we want our, there we go, 0.10 millimeters or four thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and go under the car. Uh, we'll snug these up, make sure they're, they're set. And then I'll go into the car, rotate the cam again till we have our number six here at the one o'clock position. And I'll move to that one. And then I'll find the next one that needs to be, that's almost at one o'clock, rotate the crank. Get that one set, then we'll adjust that one. We'll go down the line, and I'll put a check as I go. 
So I've already put checks here, so I'll just put an X through the, the existing check as I go, and then we'll know when we're done. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Number six is rotated to the one o'clock. And let's go ahead and test our adjustment. And just like I suspected, it's tight. So that's because these valves need to be adjusted. So let's go ahead and adjust that one. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the one we're working on. I don't know how, how well you guys can see this. There we go. This is the one that I'm adjusting. So first, we're gonna Turn the top counterclockwise and the bottom clockwise to break the connect, break the break it loose. See now it's loose. Now I'm going to turn the bottom one down, and then I'm going to retighten the top. And we just gain clearance that way. And it's probably going to be way too loose now, but let me give it a shot. Okay, way too loose. So I'm gonna snug it back up again. So what that tells me, these were just barely out of adjustment. All right, I've loosened it up some. I'm sorry, tighten it back up some. All right, we wanna go a little bit more. So we'll loosen the top. Now I need to switch my wrenches. And bring up the bottom. All right, let's see what that is. Ooh, it's tight again. Oh, there we go. Perfect. That's right where I want it, right there. So now we need to tighten it back up. There we go. Now you don't need to. That is perfect. And we have tightened that one down and we're good to go. Let's do a final check before we move on. Perfect. Ever so slight amount of drag. So I'm gonna mark off number six, which was an intake. So we have number one, number six. And let's see what the next one that's about to come up is. Six, I see right here. One, two, three, number four. See, it's like at 11 o'clock. We want it to be at one o'clock. So number four is an exhaust. So we'll go back to our 0.35 millimeters for that one. So that's the process, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out, go through all of them, get our perfect valve adjustment. And then we're gonna go over to the parts washer, get our valve cover cleaned up, Take our throttle linkage and other parts over there, get all this cleaned up, get our new valve cover gasket, and reassemble the top end of this motor. Okay, I just finished the valve adjustment. We just did number nine. Now, the interesting thing is number two, three, five, seven, and eight, they were in perfect adjustment. It was number one, four, six, nine, and ten that needed adjusting. So what that tells me is that the car had uh, had its proper valve adjustment probably 20 or 30 mi thousand miles ago, something like that. And it was just starting to go out of adjustment and only half the valves had gone out of adjustment. The other were still in perfect spec. So anyway, that's a good sign. Uh, so this is fully adjusted. Everything is in perfect spec. Uh, 14, let's see, 0.14. Let's see, yeah, I'm sorry, 0.35 on the exhaust and 0.10 on the intake. And that is exactly what Mercedes tells us on the sticker right there. So let's go ahead, start cleaning things up, get our valve cover and valve cover uh, gasket back on here. All right, let's start getting this valve cover cleaned up.
quadruple aught wool are zero, 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 quadruple aught. Steel wool is great for cleaning up chrome and aluminum. I mean, you know, if you wanted these to be absolutely perfect, I guess they could be sandblasted. But uh, I'll just clean them up in the parts washer, and I am definitely satisfied with that result. There we go. This cadmium piece cleaned up really nice. And so did the uh, cadmium uh, or zinc dichromate oil filler cap. That cleaned up nice too. All right, let's get our valve cover gasket and get this back on the car. Here we go, guys. Here's everything uh, cleaned up in the parts washer. Uh, and I'm really happy how this turned out. We have nice, nice cadmium still on, on all the parts. You can see it's worn off a little there, but we have it all over these parts a little on the base plate here it's worn off but remember that's covered up with the black cap so you actually only see those exposed cadmium parts there and uh still some nice cadmium on this piece here so that looks that looks really nice okay before we put our valve cover back on a few items i want to take care of here first we're gonna well first let's go ahead let's change that dirty old uh pre-fuel filter there and then we'll go ahead and change our main fuel filter here. And then I want to put in the upgraded Bosch uh, primer pump. This is the original style primer pump. After we do all that, uh, let's go ahead and do um, these diesel return hoses. Those, uh, those have all been, all this stuff has been on here for a long time. So let's get that junk out of here. Let's go ahead and throw our new valve cover gasket on here. Make sure it's off. Clean around the edges there. Yep. <laughs> what a weird valve cover. Look at this thing. <laughs> Could it be any more complex? I mean, this <laughs> look at that gasket. That is uh, some German engineering. They could have just like designed it as a square. I mean, a rectangle. They could have just designed it as a rectangle, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I guess they did something right, considering the cars go a million miles, so who am I to say anything? We'll just leave that there and uh, go ahead and work on the diesel return hoses and fuel filters and primer pump now. All right, these little primer pumps can be a bitch to get off of here. Um, I found the best way to do it is throw some vice grips down on there, and you just got to get the right angle. Okay, there we go. Ah, got it. And he's got to crack it loose. It's kind of a tricky angle to get. And then once you crack it loose, it just spins off. But these uh, these original style, um, they can leak. See, there's a, you can already see it. There's an old gasket right there. See the cracking around this O-ring? And they can leak right up here because this style you have to unscrew there we go you unscrew it and it pops out and then you can pump it and then it's supposed to reseal against that gasket and those gaskets rot let me show you the new design here's the uh the new design bosch you don't have to uh undo it it just pumps and we'll screw this cap off and we can see they they apply uh, supply us with a new copper crush washer so we want to make sure we get that other crush washer off of there. You can probably barely see it. It's right there. It's kind of dark down here. So usually I have to get a pick to get that off of there. Oh, there we go. Just let it fall on the floor. And then we hold that crush washer, the new one, as we set it down on there so it doesn't fall off. There we go. And we can start to screw that back in by hand. And it takes a 17 millimeter. 
All right, you guys can see it down in there. And you want to use a crow's foot. Um, I actually have an 11 16 which I think that's equivalent to 17 millimeter in metric. But uh, we'll get that down in there. There we go. And then we can screw that thing back on there. Primer pump. There we go. Now let's put in our pre-fuel filter. There we go. You can see our nasty old pre-fuel filter down here. And you want a little, just a stubby uh, wrench that you can fit down in here. And there's just a couple of uh, Phillips screws for the hose clamps. Just, there we go. Okay. So we're just going to throw that one on the ground and get our other one in there before it leaks everywhere. There we go. All right. There we go. Let me wipe all that down. And let's go ahead and check the operation of our pump. All right, we're gonna press our pump here. There we go. See the filter filled right up. There we go, works perfect. All right, now let's get this old uh, fuel filter off of here. This uh, big main fuel filter. All right, the main filter here is a 22 millimeter. And we'll just go ahead and Get that off of here. Now, you're gonna leak diesel everywhere. That's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything. We just broke it loose. And then, we get a little more loose. Yeah, that thing's been on there a long time. Oh. Just pull this guy all the way out of here <laughs> and see if we can get that bottom filter loose. Okay, I just put a little force on there and we got that, got that old filter out of here. All right, so let's go ahead and get our new filter. Now, see how this is full? See how this is full? This is because there's no air in it. You don't want any air in your system, so we need to fill the uh, new fuel filter uh, all the way up to the top, just like this, to make sure there's no air in the system. And that'll make it way easier to start when we put our valve cover and stuff back on. All right, we got our new filter. Let's go ahead and get some fresh diesel in it all the way up to the top, as far as we can fill it. And you're, you're going to spill some... Hey, Jefferson. <laughs> Jefferson, stop it. Move. You're going to spill some when you're... Uh, Putting it back in the car, but that's okay. Just make a mess. Jefferson, this, this video is not about you, buddy. Okay, I love you too. Get, get out of here. <laughs> All right, I would say that is full to the brim. In fact, I'll just tap a little bit off of there with my rag. There we go. All right, let's go get this in the car. We'll just spin it on there. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and tighten it up there. And you just tighten it till it bottoms out, guys. There we go, that should be good. We'll just, you wanna check for leaks after you uh, replace this once the car fires back up. We'll check all of that and watch for any leaks. Okay, next thing we wanna do is get these diesel return hoses off. So if you're lucky, they don't break apart and you can pull them off with some pliers, just with a little twisting. Yep, these are rotten, so it broke apart on there. So I have to take a little, uh, razor blade and 
get the old part off of there. Yeah, I think these are all going to give me trouble. Yep, see that one broke too. It just, I'll show you what I'm talking about. There we go. See how it just tore off and left some of the uh, hose still around the nipple. So, to, to, and that, that's common, guys. And to fix that, you just got to come in here with a razor blade and kind of cut along the side of it there. Just going to slice through that old hose. Here we go. Ah, there we go. That's that little rotted piece we were trying to get off of there. See how I just slid it? Slid it down the side there and that loosened it up. But anyway, I got to do that probably on all of them. Okay, we have all new return hoses on there. Here's all the bits and pieces uh, from the ones I cut off there. But you can see now we have back to the main filter through the original clip and then this one now, so it doesn't interfere with your throttle linkage, tucks around here and clips into that original clip. Now, back here on the first or the fifth cylinder, see that nipple right there? That is plugged from the factory. Here's the original plug I pulled off of there. See the little metal plug down in there? So we need to cut this open, take that metal plug, transfer it to a fresh piece of uh, return hose and reattach it. So let's go ahead and do that. And the reason I have this stuff out, guys, when I, when I cut the line, before I put it on the nipple, I just squirt a little bit of oil on it and it lets it slip on there much easier. So let's see if I can cut this one open without slicing my finger off. And we're gonna get that little metal plug out of there. There it goes. And there is our plug. See, it's basically, it's basically a nipple with no hole through it and then just a cap on the end. So, we're going to go ahead, squirt a little oil on there like that. And just stick it down here in some new hose. I'll mash it in there with the table. All right. There we go, like that. Normally, use a sharp razor blade for this, guys, and you don't have to saw back and forth. Now, I'll just put a little oil on that. I'm going to go right back here. There it is. And we're just going to twist it on there and press it all the way down. We want to go all the way down. Come on. There we go. Now it's bottomed out. And that'll probably be good for 10 years. So... That's an easy job, guys, and this is normal diesel maintenance. You'll know when you need to change these is you'll, you know, your car will be cranked and you'll, you'll start to smell a little diesel either inside or you'll smell some outside the vehicle. And uh, you'll come in here and look and you'll see one of these will be just completely wet or you'll just see diesel just leaking out of one of these return hose areas. And that's when you know you need to change it. All right, let's go ahead and get this valve cover on here. We've done the filters, return hoses, and uh, injection primer pump. All that's done. Let's put the valve cover on. All right. And remember, our cruise control is not on here. So that makes it a lot easier to reinstall this. And you've got to pull your little hoses out of the way that we just put on. And there we go. When the cruise control is not there, that's really simple. All right, now I'm going to put our clips, the original factory clips, back on to our vacuum lines here. We'll reattach our vacuum line in here. All right, let's go get the, uh, the top end of the throttle linkage. Okay, guys, if you remember earlier in the video, you remember I talked about... Uh, these levers, these small levers right here that press in. There you go. See them right there from the top. See that lever presses in. So those are wear items. Uh, the tips of them wear off, and uh, it's good to replace those. Um, so what we, I went to RBM of Atlanta and picked up. They, Mercedes still sells these. These are the little levers right here. And I want to replace both of those levers so it... Makes the uh, 
vacuum system work exactly as it was intended. And there's just an Allen screw right here on the top. We'll go ahead and screw that out of there. All right. And then this guy just pulls off of here like that. Yep, and there we go. You can see, see how the bottom one here has already started to wear through? <coughs> Excuse me, see the, see the hole right there? So it's technically still working, but barely. And the top one actually looks, yeah, the top one's good, but you can see it's very thin right here at the tip. So anyway, while I've got this out, I'm replacing both, even though the top one still has plenty of life left in it. We're going to go ahead and do this so it won't have to do, be done again for, you know, another 20 years or whatever. All right, guys, I have a little punch right here. Um, and I realize everybody might not have those tools, but just need to slip it. There we go. And that little pin's coming out. There we go. See how our pin's coming out? And when our pin comes out, we can take off the lever. See if we can get this last one out here. There we go. All right. That's exactly how it came out. So I want to put it back in that direction. We'll take that lever off there too. Set that down there. All right. Let's get our fresh ones. Our new part there versus the old worn out one with the hole in it. So... We just stick that part right back in there. Now I want to go ahead and get the pin started on this side. Okay, got it through that far. Okay, now let's put our new pin in here. There we go. You can usually get that last one in by just pressing down. <clears throat> there we go. And guys, you want to leave a little bit sticking out of the end like that. See how that little bit is sticking out? And we just come up right below right below the surface there because there's a hole. Oh, cool. I can clean under there now, but there's a, uh, a hole right there where the bottom of that pin sticks in and then the screw goes there and it locates it so it can't move. All right, this lets me clean that up real good. And we're going to re-lubricate that with some white lithium grease. All right, there we go. Now, our pin, let me go ahead and squeeze the bottom here to make it a little more round. There we go. All right, let's put that in there. There we go. That's perfect. Now let's get our Allen. And also, what I didn't show you guys See, this is, uh, that bolt goes through these two plastic loops right here. And see, there's a silver spacer in between there. If that spacer's not there, your bolt's going to crush that. So that spacer keeps these parts from crushing. And there we go. Those levers are correctly replaced. See how they operate now? Got the top one going. And the bottom one. See the bottom one down there? The bottom one goes first. Then under full acceleration, the top one goes. So now let me get some, a uh, little bit of grease in there, a little white lithium grease, and we'll reassemble this on the car. There we go. Now this is also, there we go. This, that's what the cover's for, is to protect all that grease in there. So there we go. That's going to lubricate that just good and or just fine. And we're going to go ahead and put our cap back on and get this all back on the car. All right. I'll just do set everything up here loosely because keep in mind, I'm still popping off all the little uh, arms here so I can lubricate them. But we'll just set that there. And 
So this one goes here like that. And let's get a couple of uh, bolts in there to hold it. And guys, keep in mind, these bolts are going into an aluminum valve cover. So you do not crank these down. There's no pressure or, you know, there's, there's no, you don't need a lot of clamping force up here. It's just your throttle linkage. So, you know. All right, we'll just snug all these down. There you go, snug. That's it. Uh, keep in mind, I also need to bolt down my uh, valve cover, which I'm going to do here in a sec. There we go, snug and snug. All right, before we put the uh, nuts around the valve cover, I want to go around and make sure that gasket didn't fold under anywhere. Now let's take a look. Yeah, that's all good. Let me look around the back. You also have vacuum lines and wires running around here. You to make sure those didn't get pinched underneath the valve cover. There we go. We're good. And guys, same goes for these. You do not need to put a crazy amount of torque on here. Just snug everything up. We'll get that one snug. And we'll go back here. Go back up here. And we'll go to this one. Okay, start getting this linkage reattached. Now I want to lubricate uh, the linkage before I snap it all back together. And let me go ahead and get some automatic transmission fluid. That's what I use to lubricate all the linkage. And first, so I got my little uh, syringe with ATF fluid. So first let's get in here. I'm going to push this one right through there and I'll just drop a little fluid on the end of that one doesn't really need much and then through the one that goes into the firewall back here not sure if you guys can see that yeah you can see that and we'll put this back into there all right, now let's go ahead and we're gonna put our cotter pin back through the one on the fire hole, on the fire hole, on the fire wall without dropping it. Let me get some pliers. There we go. Get that guy on there. And then we wanna put our little retaining clip right there. Sometimes it helps guys to remove your gloves when you're doing this because you got to be able to feel these little clips and it just sucks to drop them. There we go. Got that one on there. Good. And I'm just going to squirt a little lubrication in there. Right up there. Nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and lubricate these guys, reconnect them, and then disconnect the backs and lubricate those. And it helps to pop these on to have some channel locks. All right. Very nice. Let's get this one down here. On right here. Okay. 
Perfect. All right, now that I got those attached, I'm gonna pop off the back side and clean that up and lubricate that. Ooh, that is nice and smooth. <coughs> Let's get these two back ones here and then we're done with that throttle linkage. Boom. Now I'm gonna put a little lubrication up here. And here, let's put our Bowden cable back through here. Okay. Now, let's adjust this Bowden cable. So the correct adjustment for the Bowden cable, you see we have our little stop right there. At, at rest, you want like one millimeter of clearance, about like that right there. So we're going to tighten that up by turning this nut right here. That's where you want it. Let's go a little bit more. You just want it barely about to touch so it'll engage as soon as we hit the throttle. All right, guys, look at that. Nice and smooth. Let's put our cover back on here. Okay, right there, you see that little tab there? That little goes over the tab, and then this part hooks over the front of the uh, uh, vacuum lines once I press them in there. And then we have our little screw right there. All right, let me wipe this down a little bit. And there we go, guys. We have gotten that all cleaned up, lubricated, new return lines, new fuel filter, new primer pump, new main filter, Got everything super clean. Look how nice it works. Freshly lubricated. Now, in uh, one of the next videos, I'm putting the cruise control back on here. But look at that original zinc dichromate, AKA cadmium plating. That's original, guys. Look how good that looks. So, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Okay, sometimes when you change your fuel filter, it won't fire, but it'll fire up and then die like a few seconds later. So let's see if we topped it off enough and got it primed enough. See if, see if we can get a one start. All right, here we go. Glow plugs. Bam. Oh, there it goes. Got that air pocket out of there. There we go. Now it's out of there. Let's go check out this idle now with our fresh valve adjustment and all the clean filters. That is a thing of beauty. Look how smooth. Let me put the camera on the stand so you guys can see how smooth that is. Now, ignore the air cleaner. The camera makes those look funny, like they're wobbling, but it's just vibrating, it's the frame rate. Look how smooth that engine is. You can barely see it moving. Here we go, guys. Mission accomplished. All right, so that concludes uh, this video. I think this was part four. I can't remember what part we're on, but uh, that concludes this video. In the next video, we're gonna do uh, like radio, cruise control, uh, tachometer, 
make sure the RPMs are working, the gauge is working. Uh, we've got a lot of little stuff to work on to get sorted out. So hope you enjoy the video. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.